season two of 10 Questions with a Pro, and I'm excited that my guest for tonight's show is Zach Steffen. Zach is a professional goalkeeper for Manchester City and the United States national team. Zach is the first professional goalie I ever, I've ever i ever seen play in a game, and I have watched a lot of his games and clips and highlight clips to learn how to improve my game. This interview is something I have personally been excited for because it is great to see an American goalie play in the Premier League. Zach, I know you have a very busy schedule, and I appreciate you taking time to talk with me. All right, Zach, let's start this interview with a big question. Why did you become a goalkeeper? Well, thanks for having me on, Brady. What an intro that was. Um, <laughs> why did I become a goalkeeper? Um, it was It's actually um, thanks to, to one of my old uh, goalkeeper friends. He didn't come up. He didn't show up to a, a tournament um, one weekend because his parents wouldn't allow him to. Um, his grades in school weren't good enough, and um, that's most important in school. Um, so his parents didn't allow him to come, and our coach was – uh was kind of panicking and then just asked who wants to who wants to play goalie um and i guess i raised my hand and um i went and get in one and goal and, and i had fun and, and i guess i did well enough and, and i um, just stuck with it that's awesome what motivates you to keep training hard to maintain being a professional goalkeeper uh i think that just goes back to how i was raised uh, my parents and my mom um, really just instilled hard work and dedication and, and always wanting to be um, better in the classroom, better off the field, but also better on the field um, and just doing my best um, in, in whatever I um, whatever I want to do in life. Yeah, because um, your parents help you out a lot, just like mine do. Yeah, it's a, it's a blessing. Yep. Is training with the U.S. team different than training with Man City? Um, I would say it's very similar. Um, obviously, the, the, the quality is a little bit different, um, and it's, it's a little bit um, – it might be a little bit more hectic in national team camp because we don't – we're not together um, as often as uh, we are with Manchester City. Um, we get 10 days every, every two months, three months. Um, so that's, that's tough to get all our tactical and, and – and, everybody on the same page uh, make sure that everybody knows the game plan and, and all that but greg berhalter our, our national team coach he he really admires pep and his style and then we uh we want to keep the ball uh we want to tire teams out and, and make them run so um the, the way to do that is really the uh the the manchester city style pep style um, and that's just, just to, to keep the ball and um so the the trainings are very very similar um and yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I I understand it. It might be a little bit similar. I don't know what it's like, but uh, like you said, it's a little bit similar. But is it like the same style of goalkeeping? Is there more goalkeepers with Man City, or is there more goalkeepers with the U.S.? Is tell me the difference what you have with both teams. I would say it's very similar. I mean, we get I think we have three keepers in camp usually for the national team. We have three keepers in training. Um, we always start out with, with the goalkeeping coaches and the go goalkeeping, uh, group and, and warm up with them, um, do our 30, 45 minutes, um, of training with them. Um, and then we, we will go with the team, whether that's tactical, um, whether that's shooting, um, crossing and finishing, um, sometimes we'll, we'll do just small games. Um, but it really just varies on what day it is during the week and how close we're getting, uh, to, to the game day. That's awesome. What steps help you achieve the ability to become a professional level goalkeeper? What step? What steps? What steps? Um, I mean, many steps. It's it's a long process. Um, it's tough. I mean, it's you just gotta go in every day, go into every training, and try and get better. Um, One percent better is what I say. Um, and it's a process of, of being su successful and, and becoming the, the, the best player to your ability. It's a process and, um, you really just have to embrace the, 
the journey. Um, you got to be patient. There's going to be ups and downs because um, that's life um, in general. Um, and, and I'm sure you know, being a goalkeeper, there's there's ups and downs. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you got to learn from those lessons. You got to learn from the goals, from the mistakes. Um, and, and you just can't get too high when, you, when you're doing really well. Um, and you just got to keep trucking along. So when you say 1% better every day, what do you mean by like like that? You mean like going into training and like every training you'll get 1% better every practice you do? So my mentality going into training is, um, I mean, there's in goalkeeping training, there's so many different things that we work on. There's so many different um, char- characteristics that a goalkeeper needs to have these days. Um so my mentality is just to go into training and be as focused um, and concentrated as I can um, and ha- have my keeper coach push me um, that day and each day um, and just focus on whatever he decides that we're, we're working on that day. And, and if, you're, if you're focused, if you're willing to put in the work, the dedication um, and the effort, then um, you're, you're really going to take a step forward that day. Yep, because you've got to be willing to uh, make sacrifices and miss out on stuff. Most definitely, most definitely. What sacrifices did you make through your life to be able to become a professional goalkeeper? Uh, I would say when I was early, just missing out on hanging out with friends during the weekends because of tournaments or um, missing birthdays from family members or friends or holidays. Um because I was traveling um, with the national team for camps or um, just tournaments in general. Um, And then, um, yeah, I would say sacrifice the fun and the good times that most people have when, when you just kind of work a a nine to five and um, you you get vacation days, a certain amount of vacation days off a year. And, um, but like you said, sacrificing, it all pays off um, if you continue to work hard. Um, and and that, that's life. You got to sacrifice to some of the good to, to get to where you want to be, where you want to go. Yeah. yeah, because you've got to be willing to make sacrifices to get to the next level. Most definitely. You do. If you weren't a professional goalkeeper, what goalkeeper, what else would you ha- want to be? It's a really tough question. Um, I tell I tell people all the time I don't know what I would want to be because all I've known is soccer my whole life. Really, um, I mean, I would want I, I love sports. I would want to be somewhat in the sports realm, um, whether that's commentating or or being close to um, to to sports teams, working with them um, because the the bonds that the players have the players have and um, just the, the opportunity that these players have, um, that we have, and then the staff. Um, it, it's awesome, and it's, it's a lot of fun to be part of. That's awesome. Sports is really important, uh, just like mentally-wise. They are. I mean, you get, you get, uh, you get good exercise. Um, yeah, you're around great athletes, nice people. You get to meet so many cool different people and, and, and travel and, and um, be a part of something special. Yep. What? Oh wait, sorry. Um, what have you done on the field and off the field that you're most proud of? What have I done on the field that I'm most proud of? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say, I mean, I guess just being a a, a role model and and a yeah a role model for for kids um definitely for my brothers um and my and my family and my sisters um but also um kids like you and and kids growing up um just to be a positive figure um on the field it's awesome um and and it's very humbling and, and and an honor for me um and i feel like i won't truly realize that and and realize how um how big uh, this moment is for me until I'm done playing and then maybe I have kids and, and or I'm a coach and and, um, and I get to see it from from kind of the outside. Um, 
And then I'd say off the field, like you, I have my own um, charitable foundation um, and I'm just trying to give back to, to disadvantaged communities. Um, um, we at Voice Now, we, we want to just give the, the minority communities that, that don't have the resources and funding and, and support uh, we want to help give them support and and um, be a part of of those communities as much as um, as much as our communities that I grew up in. Yep, trying to help out people is like the best thing you can do in the world. It feels so good, and then once you do it, after people are going to think good about you. Absolutely, absolutely, it's such a good fulfilling feeling, and and just to see smiles and and, and all that, and, and and I know you you know that feeling, and I admire what you're doing. My man, that's awesome. Thanks. Um, what goalies or soccer players inspired you? Do you want to be a professional? Uh, growing up, I mean, Tim Howard was one of my favorites. Um, definitely the biggest role model for me. Um, but I mean, I watched Dita play uh, the Brazilian. Um, I loved. Um, uh, Wow, wow, I'm drawing a blank. Um, Casillas, I love watching him. He was like a little cat and goal, small, but so quick and, and um, agile. And um, he was fun to watch. Um, and then, yeah, Casey Keller and, and Brad Friedel, that's just, that's just awesome that they were um, able to come over to Europe and, and do so well um, and do well with the national team as well. But Tim Howard, I would say, was my, was my biggest role model growing up. Yeah, Tim Howard is such an inspiration for me as a young goalkeeper and for some goalkeepers who are in the pro level, they still might look up to him and train hard. For definitely. What are your favorite gloves to wear in net and why? I wear the uh, Nike Vapor Grip. Um, I like them because they're, I mean, I just have a good feeling on the ball. Um they they're very easy to to break in um after one one wear they're yeah they have they have good grip on the ball um they make me feel confident in goal um and i think they look good um uh, but no i think for me it's it's all about how i feel um and if i can move my fingers enough but there's a little bit of padding and and, and grip and um yeah i li- i like the vapor grips a lot um, what do you wear yeah I wear West Coast right now, but I had okay. one pair of uh, Nikes um, okay. a while when I was like, I don't even remember seven no. or eight. Um, what, uh, they were the go on, oh, sorry. they were the Nike materials, and they came down like all the way down your arm. Nice. You like them or what? Um, yeah, they were pretty good. I mean, they good. felt like a second skin almost. Like it felt okay. like you had like a lizard hand or something. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, how are the West Coast? I've, I've had a few teammates in MLS that, that had them and they love them. They look good too. Yeah, they um, are very cool. West Coast are the best gloves I've had on my hands since I've started okay. playing. Wow. Uh, the grip on them are amazing. They're weatherproof. Uh, they have um, they have the finger shades in them and if you don't like them, you can take them out. They nice. have all different colors and different ways you can wear the gloves. I mean, they're just amazing old glove overall you can uh they and then once you take the um finger saves out of the finger there's like mm-hmm. this weird texture in the finger and it feels it's so much easier to catch the ball because oh, wow. it holds the um finger saves in place but like okay. it's your finger sticks to the part and it like your ball your um the ball stays right in your hand so you don't drop it oh you gotta love that <laughs> yeah they're really great. comfortable you gotta keep working hard buddy and maybe you can get a uh a sponsorship from them in the future Maybe. I don't know. That would be awesome. Yeah. Is there a save that you made in your mind that really sticks out? Um, not really. Uh, for me, it's more about, I mean, just moments. I mean, there aren't, like, too many saves. Maybe a couple of the PK saves um, with Columbus. Um, I mean, I would say the PK shootout in Atlanta, that was awesome um, during the whole save the crew moment um, or movement. Um, that shootout was awesome and how we celebrated after and, and, and quieted 70,000 people. That was definitely an awesome moment. Um, and then I would say the, the double save um, 
against France um, two summers ago, 2018, before they went to the World Cup. Um, that, was, that was pretty um, – yeah. So, cause I feel like, you know, you know, sometimes where you make the save and you're like, wow, I didn't think I was going to save that at all. I don't know how I saved that. Um, and yeah, that was kind of the France game. The double save was kind of like a moment like that where That's you just awesome. surprised yourself. Yeah. Um, when I saw you play, you made some amazing saves. I saw, I remember you made this Thanks, one man. save and I was like, how the heck did he just. <laughs> Thanks bro. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, what advice would you give a young goalkeeper like me that wants to play at a professional level? Yeah, I would say, like I said before, I would say just continue to, to have that strong mentality of just knowing that there's going to be, just like in life, there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows and you just got to keep, you just got to write them out. You've got to push through them. You got to continue to work hard each and every day, um, on and off the field. Um, school's most important. Um, soccer is there um, to kind of, yeah, um, yeah. Soccer can take you to a lot of places, but you definitely need education first. Um, but I would say, yeah, just to have the patience to know that it's a process, um, just like life. It's, it's a process to to get to to be the best that you can be, and and. Um, you just got to find the patience and, and once you find that you're you'll be fine and you'll go into each training wanting to have fun and you're going to every game um not scared and, and fearless and, and ready to to help your team out when when you're called upon mm -hmm. that's great advice i agree with you 100 percent. you have to have good mentality you gotta take your win you gotta take your loses with you got to mm -hmm. take the losers with your wins. You got to have the same attitude. If you beat a team twenty to zero, or if you lose twenty to zero, you have Absolutely. to have the same attitude. Absolutely, I like that, man. I like that. I wish I knew that at your age. I was all scared and nervous and anxious. Uh, oh, trust I me, I still am. Yeah, it's normal though. It's normal. I still get nervous and, and anxious as well. But um, yeah, I mean, as you grow older and, and the more trainings you have, the more games you have, you'll you'll relax a little bit more and and. Uh, won't think as much. All right, thanks. Um, now, do you have any questions for me? For you, what made you uh, you want to start this whole charitable um, foundation you're doing? So I went to a camp in 2019, and the coach there told me that we needed to use the skills to be leaders on the field and off the field. So I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about helping out people, uh, mm -hmm. giving back to the community and stuff. Um, so then me and my dad started talking about breast cancer awareness and how family mem my family members had some. Uh, some had breast cancer, and one of them died from it. Oh, so I'm then sorry uh, it was, yeah, thanks. Uh, but then it was tough for me to handle that. So, like, I wanted to help people out so they didn't have to go through that experience. Wow. That's awesome, man. For you to be so young and, and to, to have such a big heart and want to do that, this is this is a, an honor for me to be on your podcast. Uh, and for you to start so young, like I said, it's, it's – it's, um, yeah, your future is bright, little man. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, the picture I posted on Instagram yesterday of me holding the check, we um, raised uh, like $100 more dollars, uh, today. So wow. I'm – at 2,706. Oh my gosh. Well done. Well done. That's awesome, <laughs> man. You, you. got to feel great about that. That's awesome. Yeah, it does feel really good helping out all those people. That's amazing. Good for you. Thank you, Zach, so much for coming on 10 Questions with a Pro. Thank you for taking time to talk with me and for supporting Keeper for a Cure. I am very excited to announce that our campaign to raise money for the Phillips Cancer Center is over. And we have raised $2,706. Thank you to everyone who has donated to my latest campaign as it is going to help a lot of people battling cancer at the Phillips Cancer Center. Remember to check out the show and all their other shows on our YouTube channel. Just search Keeper for a Cure. We also have a podcast on Spotify and iTunes. Just search Keeper for a Cure and remember to subscribe and like. Please visit www.keeperforacure.com. I'm Brady Krizowitz, and tonight's episode features Zach Steffen from Man City. Thank you for tuning in to 10 Questions with the Pro.